A reading from the Ecclesial Crisis in Ukraine and its Solution According to the Sacred Canons by Metropolitan of Kikos and Tileria Nikiforos. Continuing Chapter 7 The Conciliar and Hierarchical System of Governance of the Universal Orthodox Church. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. The fact, however, that the Orthodox Church's system of administration is conciliar hierarchical is also evident from certain passages from the Holy Fathers. We will mention St. John Chrysostom, who, interpreting Psalm 149.1, his praise in the Church of the Saints, wrote, It shows that worship should be offered up together and with all accord, for Church is a name for system and council. Nicodem Milash adds, quote, However, while the organ of the highest ecclesiastical authority over the entire church is the ecumenical council, in specific churches this organ is the local synod. Unquote. The institution of the local synod was instituted and legislated by the divine and holy canons. Apostolic Canon 37 stipulates, quote, Let there be a synod of bishops twice a year, once in the fourth week of Pentecost and once in the month of October, and together let them closely examine the teachings of the, of the faith and let them resolve the ecclesiastical disputes that have arisen, unquote. In his commentary on this canon, Nicodemus the Hagiorite informs us that, quote, the timing of one of these two synods was changed by Canon 5 of the First Ecumenical Council so that it convenes before Holy Lent, so that by means of the synod's judgment, every difference and partiality that the clergy and laity might have towards each other and toward their bishop may be dispelled from their midst, and thus they may purely and passionlessly offer God the gift of the fast. Unquote. Indeed, Canon 5 of the First Ecumenical Council states, quote, Let the synods take place as so, one before Lent, so that all meanness of spirit having been put away, the pure gift may be offered to God, the second around the time of autumn, unquote. On the same topic, Canon 19 of the Fourth Ecumenical Council, Canon 8 of the Sixth Ecumenical Council, and Canon 6 of the Seventh Ecumenical Council all refer to the convening of local synods. Canon 19 of the Fourth Ecumenical Council states, quote, The Holy Council has therefore stipulated, in accordance with the canons of the Holy Fathers, that the bishops meet twice a year somewhere in each province, wherever the bishop of the metropolis deems appropriate, and set aright all matters that arise. Those bishops who do not take part and remain in their own cities, if they are in good health and free of any indispensable and necessary occupation, are to be fraternally rebuked. Unquote. That is to say, this canon makes the bishop's attendance at two annual synods mandatory and stipulates that bishops who are unjustifiably absent should be reprimanded. After adopting the decisions relating to local synods established by the Holy Fathers of the previous councils, Canon 8 of the Sixth Ecumenical Council differs with regard to the number of times they are to be convened annually, stating the following, quote, since, on account of barbarian raids and other causes that arise, the presidents of the churches are unable to hold synods twice a year, it has seemed best for the aforementioned bishops to convene a synod once a year, as is reasonable for those ecclesiastical matters that arise in every province, from the Holy Feast of Pascha to the end of the month of October of each year, in the place which the bishop of the metropolis, as has been said, deems appropriate." Unquote. Finally, Canon 6 of the Seventh Ecumenical Council renews the decision of Canon 8 of the Sixth Ecumenical Council, which stipulates that one synod take place a year on account of insurmountable difficulties due to barbarian raids. This canon, however, adds that any ruler who prevents the synod from being convened should be excommunicated, and that any metropolitan who neglects to do this, that is, to convene the synod once a year, should be punished with penalties. It specifically mentions that, quote, the Holy Fathers of the Sixth Council stipulated that it should convene once a year, by any means and through any pretext, and set aright those things that have gone wrong. Therefore, we renew this canon, and if a ruler is found to be hindering this, let him be excommunicated. If any metropolitan does not attend, apart from cases of necessity, 
violence, or some reasonable excuse, let him be subject to penalties. Unquote. Canon 20 of the Council of Antioch also deals with the same issue, as then does Canon 40 of the Council of Laodicea. The basis, however, for the functions of the conciliar and hierarchical system of governance in local churches is Apostolic Canon 34, which states that the metropolitan of each province is bound to honor the authority of his bishops. They should not do anything that goes beyond the boundaries of their bishoprics without his consent, while he himself should not do anything without the consent of all the bishops. In this manner, the conciliar and hierarchical system of governance of each local church is made evident. Apostolic Canon 34 decrees as follows, quote, The bishops of each nation must acknowledge the first among them and hold him as the head, and do nothing extraordinary without his consent. Each must only do those things which concern his own parish and the rural areas dependent on it, but neither may he do anything without the consent of all, for in this way there will be unanimity and God will be glorified through the Lord and in the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Unquote. Glory be to our God, to him also be honor and dominion always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Jordanville Readings is produced and distributed by Holy Trinity Publications in Jordanville, New York. All rights reserved. For more information about today's reading and our full list of publications, please see the show notes or visit holytrinitypublications.com. If you are able, please support this podcast and our wider publishing work with a monthly pledge at patreon.com slash holytrinity.com.